it is honestly the sword and the shield. You have to learn how to pick your battles. There are times when a sword is needed, but there are times when a shield is needed. <laughs> It's dark as obsidian, and it's light and beautiful and bright as the sun, the salt of the earth, fire burning and water dripping. How could they be using goddess of magic? She is timeless. The blood that doesn't need a blood. She is the wildest woman. And let me say it again for those who need to hear it. The black woman is God. Let me say it again. The black woman is God. To my spot room 303 if you like this video well then like this video let the comments reveal how you really feel and if you feel it about well go ahead on and subscribe and before you blink share that link I know you like it that's that Ric Flair drip right there and for all my returnees you know what we do it is time to call that roll, and I need all my women who independent to come on, come on, come on to the front of the play, pipe down. And I need my alpha females and my men haters up to the front of the class for read aloud. Seven whole nights, and not a word from you. This might got me feeling like I'm back in my recording artist days. It's giving me that Mariah Carey and One Sweet Day video vibe. Anyway, only problem I got with this new mic is that it covers up my mannequin head, Chelsea. And I don't like that. And I don't like that shit. Anyway, so we are here today to talk about the independent women, the alpha females, and the man haters. So as a community builder extraordinaire, I see this particular topic creating a lot of division between black men and black women. And I'm not exactly fully sure why in 2021, almost 2022, we are still likening ourselves to the animal kingdom. But okay, so alpha females get a really bad rep and I'm really tired of that. Alpha females do have a very vital, integral, and important part to play in any pride or pack. These alpha females are primarily charged with making sure that the alpha male can lead the pride. They are his support system. Same thing with honeybees, wolves, lions. In the pride, if they find that an aging male is no longer fit to serve as pack leader, or if a young male does not show courage in the face of a threat, they will annihilate him. Eat him. Eat the rich. Eat him. Actually, if he fails to perform in his capacity as an alpha male, these alpha females would be responsible for protecting and providing for the pride in the event of an untimely death of an alpha male. We really need in a complex structured community to have alpha females. They serve a function. They are not unworthy of love because of the position that they have been groomed to play. 
And I think that this causes a lot of undue, unnecessary competition between black women and black men. I'm not here right now to really talk about the dynamic between black men and black women. I'm here specifically to deal with the alpha versus beta female dynamic. So you hear a whole lot about alpha females, how masculine they are, how undesirable they are, but you very rarely hear anything about beta females. And the reason why is that even though there are many that put forward a beta female as being more desirable than an alpha female, the truth of the matter is there's someone that's going to feed off the energy of the more dominant partner and not really be capable of matching that same energy. Now that in and of itself is problematic for the black community right now because we really need to be shoulder to shoulder making the economic progress that we need to make in order to begin to leave generational wealth. We just really don't have it economically to have one spouse be a housewife or be at home. Even when we're talking about hypergamy, the truth of the matter is that the median mean income for black males is $41,500 per year. And let's just be honest, I don't care what you see on Instagram or Facebook or whatever. Most of us are living around that 50000 range, maybe a little bit more, but this whole six-figure thing, it's just not the majority for black people. It just isn't. Our education rates are simply too low to support that. Unemployment, single-family homes, and divorce rates are too high. Now, with that being said, even though the beta female is considered to be more desirable than an alpha female, you really don't hear a whole lot about them. Generally, the females that males complain the most about being unaccountable are actually your beta females, not your alpha females. But I'm not here to create a competition between the sexes or even between females. I believe that there is a better way. There are more than just two personality types for females. I am putting forward the sigma female as being a hybrid between the alpha female and the beta female. The sigma female is more cooperative than an alpha female. However, she does still have standards and boundaries and adherence that an alpha female would have. This is the wireless warrior queen female who is able to wield both the power of the sword and also know when to use the shield. The balanced divine feminine energy is both feminine and masculine. You have to know how to wield those interchangeably and also how to balance them. It's the light and the dark, the yin and the yang, and everything within the environment exists within this balance. Women have to have that balance within themselves in order to bring that type of balance to a relationship. It is just not at all reasonable to expect. It's not practical for a woman to only bring feminine energy into a relationship, especially if that woman has been single for any period of time. In your single life, you have to be able to protect and provide for yourself. You have to have access to masculine energy. So if we're really looking at how we can create stronger marriages and bonds and relationships, the truth of the matter is alpha females are just as uncooperative as alpha males. There's no balance between these two. There's no balance between these two forces. Both people have to begin to move to the center. A man should be able to balance out his masculine energy, be nurturing in the place of what a woman would provide. Even in his own personal life, he has to be more cooperative than that. Alpha males tend to have the most attachments to other women with the least amount of cooperation and long-term skills to actually build marriages and families. So I hear a lot of men throwing out, I'm an alpha, I'm an alpha, I'm an alpha, like it's this high thing, but only about 9% of men are actually alpha males. There's a much higher percentage of beta males, and they do serve their function. They tend to be much better fathers and family men, but you are going to suffer when it comes to times of provision and protection with that type of male. I think both men and women need to be learning how to channel both their masculine and their feminine energy and learn how to wield and use 
use that interchangeably. It is honestly the sword and the shield. You have to learn how to pick your battles. There are times when a sword is needed, but there are times when a shield is needed. And you have to know that being protective is just as important to know your defense as it is to have a good offense. Being in nature and being enlightened by spiritual books, reading, you know, these are the things that quiet the soul and make you so much more cooperative. They give you time to go inside and digest the information that you're receiving from your environment. Be eating good foods, cooking, these are the things that really detoxify the soul and help you to find that balance. But I just really want to encourage women to know that enhanced femininity is not the answer to the alpha female problem or issue that's being brought up. You really do need your masculine energy and you do not have to vacate all of your masculine energy in order to be seen as feminine. Femininity is having access to something and knowing when to use it. It's not necessarily being this one size fits all cookie cutter housewife. That's just not practical in the black community. I'm not really sure why a group of people that's likening themselves to animals in the animal kingdom are also wanting to be looked at as being high value. Like it can be both. We need to get in and correct some of these issues that are going on within our own society. So there's a Stokely Carmichael quote that says something like this. In order for a people group to compete in an open society, they must first close ranks. So if we're going to close ranks, we're going to have to realize that everyone has an integral part to play. We have to really, really start to think about how we can cooperate collectively in order to affect change. Thank you for stopping in and hanging out with me for a few. Remember to stay unplugged, unbothered, and unleashed. So, again, I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki. Make sure you check my about tab and follow me on my other social media links. Until next time, class is now dismissed.